All right, so uh, my name is Jared Patrick. I'm working on a tool, uh, it's called TrueStacks. We are open source. Um, and I wanted to show today how we integrate with Dagger and how it basically powers our, our entire solution. So um, the title of the um, demo here is Source to Action with Dagger. I'm going to go to the next slide here. Uh, so what is Source to Action? A Source to Action is the automatic discovery and orchestration of software delivery pipelines based on application source code. Um, so the idea is you start with the source, you have a rules engine that identifies the contents of the source, generates an action plan, and then based on the set of actions that we're defining that plan, we build a dagger pipeline and it basically executes. Right? Um, so what is TrueStacks? TrueStacks is a software delivery engine that builds pipelines from pre-built actions, and these are dagger actions, uh, that are automatically selected based on the contents of application code sources. So we, in, this, in essence, sort of fill in that rules engine layer. Uh, from an architecture standpoint, you see here we start with the source, we have a rule set, um, and we attempt to match the contents of the source based on that rule set. Um, and then you can see we have a, a number of actions that are built. And then if the facts from those rule sets are matched against, then we incorporate those actions into the plan. And each one of those actions brings its own inputs. So inputs should be thought of as not necessarily configuration. They don't change the way that the action runs in and of itself. They're like essential things such as parameters or credentials or other things that could not actually be discovered in source. So in essence, you know, you think things like an Argo CD instance might need an API token or a Sonar Cube instance might need a, you know, access token, right? These are things that are essential for the operation. We do provide some level of configuration as well. Uh, but we we try to limit it because the goal is really to move towards rules um, that can discover those things as opposed to having a, a more imperative pipeline process in the traditional sense of what's currently available. Um, we do integrate with another open source tool called ConfigU. Um, if you all have heard of it, if not, ConfigU is a it's like a sort of like a generic configuration tool. It's really cool because it allows schemas. We were actually doing something similar early on. Uh, to manage the inputs because environment variables can be, you know, somewhat unreliable uh, depending on the data types. Um, but configure just did it out of the box. So now we we have in our command line the ability to generate configure schemas, and then you can store those in a number of different locations, such as GCP Secret Manager. There's Azure Key Vault. I think there's I know there's HashiCorp and the native configure. So um, there's there's a lot of different options there. You can also just set the environment variables directly if you're running in, you know, GitHub Actions or a GitLab environment where you just want to set the environment uh, environment variables using the native tooling there. Um, once we generate the action plan, there's really two main sections or two systems in the TrueStack solution itself. The first one is the um, the rule engine, and the second part is the scheduler. When you generate the action plan, I sort of wanted to indicate it here in this diagram that, you know, build, lint, test, it's a little out of order, right? Generally, you would at least lint before you build. Perhaps you go to build, test. The key is that the action plan is completely unordered. The, the, the rule engine doesn't know anything about the way the process is actually supposed to execute. So when you actually run the plan, we pass that to the scheduler. And all, all the scheduler does is it looks at the contents of the action in the classification based on the different stages that we predefined, such as a feedback stage, pre-release stage, release stage, like a QA stage. There's really no limit to what we could define, but we've just started with a basic same set. And then there's inputs and outputs, which would be your artifacts that are generated by the actions in your action plan. So say a build generates a disk or a container build generates an OCI compliant container image. And maybe a downstream action that needs to consume that artifact. So the scheduler sorts the actions in the proper order and then places them into a pipeline. So in essence, it's a declarative, like dynamic pipeline. And because it's completely dependent on the source, if you change your sources, you can rebuild the plan and re-execute and just consume the pre-built actions without having to go and manually build the pipeline, right? And then obviously at the very end here, we have a dagger pipeline. Uh, so I don't want to take too long talking about it. Let's get right into the demo. So I bring up my CLI here. Um, I've just uh, copied down the or, or cloned down the Excalibur draw. It's just a random open source project I found online that looked pretty robust. It's kind of a cool tool if you haven't used it. It's like a like a, a diagramming tool, um, but it did have um, a, a good amount of unit tests in there and some other things that we could actually exercise the system with. 
So the two main files here is this uh, TrueStacks config JSON and the TrueStacks plan. I've already pre-generated them for time's sake. Um, let me cut into the plan. So this is an example of what our plan file looks like. It's super simple because it's declarative and it's effectively just a pointer. So this has an Argo CD sync, container build, container copy, ES1 run, package JSON version, NPM test, NPM builder. You can see all the different steps. So these steps will be fed into the scheduler and, and auto sorted and executed. And then here's the set of inputs that I was showing in the diagram. The inputs are hard bound to the actions. So that way, when you generate the action plan, you know exactly what to populate. I've already got a config U um, configuration set on my command line. And because there's credentials and things in there, I don't want to show too much of all of that. Uh, but there is one command that we run when you're using config U, if you use it, um, you, you run a config U upsert. And that upsert allows you to define a config store and a config set. So the store would be, say, GCP secret manager, and then your config set would be the name of the secret. So if it's HashiCorp Vault, it might be a, key, a KB path. If it's a GCP secret manager, it's literally just going to be the name of the secret. Um, and then you just pass in dash config, the name of the variable, and then the value. So in this case, it'd be dash config Argo CD server, dash config container registry username, right? And then you upsert it, and you and you apply the schema. So the schema will do data type checks to make sure that your types are consistent, string, boolean, integer, whatever it might be. And then now that gets stored into your config store. So now when we go to run the pipeline, we want those exported as environment variables. So we would run the reverse of that process, which is a configuration evaluation against the schema where we pull the contents out of the config store uh, using the config set name, evaluate based on the storage schema, which let me show you an example of what that looks like here. So I cut this. This is an example of the schema. So when we pull the contents out, it will evaluate this, and then we can export it as a .env. We just iterate through the .env values, run an export, mm -hmm. and now we have a bunch of environment variables on the command line ready to consume. Uh, so what I've got right now in my browser, let's minimize this guy. I've got an Argo CD instance up, and I've just got a Kubernetes instance that's got Argo CD, Cert Manager, and a number of other tools in there. 404 page not found. This will be where our applications are getting deployed. So what I do is I'll start the pipeline. It does take about five minutes, so I don't want to uh, tie things up too long. Um, so our command line is called tsctl. We've got a number of commands. You can do like a tsctl explain, and you can actually type this up. Um, explain the plan, and this will give you like an example of you know what what's going to come out of the action plan. And then when we run it, because we use the TSC or the TrueStacks.plan file as a default name, it'll just pick that up and it'll automatically execute. So again, I've exported all of my environment variables already, and I've also exported my Dagger Cloud API token. So I wanted to be able to show how we can integrate with that as well. We support that out of the box because our entire build is using Golang, um, and we just use a, the native Golang runner. So all you have to do is set your API key in whatever environment, CI, local, and it will automatically sync with Dagger Cloud. So I'll do TSCTL run. You can see the engine come up here. I come up here to Dagger Cloud and refresh. Here's my, here's my uh, run taking place here. Uh, right off the bat, you're going to see some, some output coming from the engine here. This is from the scheduler. So the scheduler is telling you which steps it's going to include. And it will start queuing these based on the first step, which is the first step is feedback. So anything we want to do that gives us feedback about the state of the application, unit testing, um, uh, container scans, anything like that, that would be pre-stage environment, right? So this would not be like deployed into a staging environment doing UAT or load tests, but anything that we can do local, um, we'll run those steps first. You see this error here, it's theoretically an error, it's not really an error. What it's effectively telling you is the scheduler has an action that was included in the action plan, but there's no downstream action that actually needs its output. So it was intelligent enough to say there's no point in wasting time executing that. Um, let's just omit it. Likewise, the scheduler is intelligent enough to know that an action has an input that's not provided by any of the actions that were included in the action plan. And that will actually cause an outright failure because it effectively means and we can't schedule the actions in the action plan in such a way that we'll be able to complete the pipeline. So I come back to Dagger Cloud. Let me see where this is at. And this thing's been running kind of slow. To be honest, I've been running it up, and I might be <laughs> a little low on disk space on my machine or something. 
Um, so while it's running, um, I'm going to come over here to one of the actions just so you all can see an example of what it looks like. So we are open source again, our, our entire uh, code base is on GitHub. So you can go out and check it out. Uh, these are the actions we've currently got. We're, we're gonna be building out tons more. Um, and also as far as Zenith goes, that's future plans as well, because we really wanna get to the point to where you know we're staying in lockstep with, with the evolutions for Dagger. Uh, so we'd love to be able to possibly do away with our own set of native actions and then we could actually wrap our our engine logic around Zenith. Um, where's this here? Let's just see if this workflow we need something different. Yeah. So as far as what's included uh, in an action, we have the action name. We've got our image. The image is theoretically a function, um, and it can it can take output coming from the configuration simply because let's say you're running a Python pipeline. It's very difficult to predict which version of Python you need in your container. Is it 3.10, 3.11, 3.7? Uh, so we can actually feed in the configuration into the image, do some conditional logic to identify certain contents in your source, maybe your pipe project Tom or something along those lines to derive which version of Python you should use, and then dynamically return an image name. So the goal is to make it flexible enough that you know common things that would need to be done, like picking version numbers should be easy, but we also want it to be rigid and declarative enough that it starts to sort of drive standards a little bit more because, um, you know, standards in our industry is <laughs> an easy solve, right? Um, you also have the stage. So this is what I was talking about. The stage is a number of stages, but this test action would occur in the feedback stage. We configure some caches and then here's the contents of the script. And down here, we do pattern registrations to identify the contents in the repository to see are there any test files. So even if I find like a Go mod in the repository and the engine starts to assume maybe this looks like it might be um, a Golang project, if I don't find any test files, I'm not going to admit that action because there were no, there's nothing to test against, right? So we wanted to get as granular as possible and stack the rules more and more so that it, it becomes more intelligent. Um, and we are an expert system, not not true AI ML. And that was on purpose. The rules are pretty primitive. Uh, we also want it to be highly predictable. And sometimes models can be difficult to maintain and keep consistent. So, and I'm also not an AI ML expert, but I know how to write some rules. So that's where we went. Um, down here, uh, we have the, the actual resolver, which includes the action, gives the outputs. This is how we're generating the descriptions for the actions. And then here's the set of facts that we're going to match against. I'm going to keep bouncing back and forth to this just to see how this is progressing along. I'm getting some nice outputs from uh, Dagger Cloud. FYI, this view um, is is really really nice because when you're when you're looking at this and this thing's rolling, oh great, we got test failures. That's fine. You know, this it's weird because this project every now and then it just I've seen the unit test just fail, even though I didn't change anything. So, but you know, scrolling through this giant wall of text. Um, versus being able to come here and do this here um, is way more advantageous. So really loving uh, the output from Dagger Cloud. It looks great. Um, but here's, uh, here's one of the rules. So if I were to go back here and actually take a look at an example of a rule, uh, if we come over here to the engine and then we come up to the rules, um, and then I just go here. This is an example rule. So it's very simple. Is there a go mod? Do we have more than one go test? Right. Some of these rules are extremely primitive. And the idea is if I were a human and I go and I look at a Git repository, what things would I do in order to determine how someone would want to deliver this application? And that's our mission is, is determining developer intent. Right. And the whole goal is it's all front loaded so that you eventually just get to Dagger. Right. That's all we really want to do is, is, is uh, enable people to use the tool without necessarily having to go and rewrite everything all the time. Right. This might. Um, I really wanted to show it all come up, but let's see. If it fails, I can rerun it. Yeah, let me try to rerun it again. Um, I'm not sure why this uh, this particular test is inconsistent because I ran it right before this demo and it came right up. So it's weird. Did you give a sacrifice to the demo gods? I did not. Yeah, I didn't. Um, there we go. That's why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I should have done it. <laughs> I was being rebellious today. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I guess, uh, we can, we can run this. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'd be 
happy to answer anything. I think that gives a, a general overview. I don't want to keep rambling on about the details um, while we awesome. try to watch this. Yeah, that's great. And then also, if if we if it comes up when after Luke's presentation, then maybe we can we can go back to that. But I, um, uh, oh, Gary is mentioning it's not your unit test, right? Uh, it's the upstream project that you're pointing to. Yeah, it's the upstream. Yeah, this is not my project. I, I all I did, and that is something that I would like to show really quick. I can kind of show you all this. Um, I'm just going to cancel this for now. Um, is, is sort of the dynamic nature of the plan. So if you look at this plan, you can see here, like we have Argo, C, uh, Argo, C, ugh, Argo CD sync here, man, that's hard to say. And that, that happens because we have the presence of an application YAML that contains the Argo CD in here. So if I come to this Argo CD and I just change this to a two, this matching expects this, app, this API version to be the one. So if I rerun a TSCTL plan, it generates a new plan file and you can see it immediately moves the Argo CD out of here, right? So now you can see how dynamic the action matching is. It, if you want to start adopting a new tool, you don't have to go write an entire pipeline or do any of that. You just add the necessary files we match and include and execute. So that's that's really the power of the tool.